I think there is an inherent problem with low budget films getting, becoming big successes mm -hmm. is the production values, the cast, the quality. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say quality, you know, it's even down to not having time for, or money for editing and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, you know, certainly, you know, schemes like microwave and like eye features, the films, whilst they may have been fantastic calling cards, now, I still think there's an inherent problem with people paying money to go to the cinema to see a film, mm -hmm. which they might be able to pay the same to go and see The Avengers. So I still think that in terms of a wide audience, um, I think the films are always going to be limited unless you can turn it into an event. And I think Blurge Project is an amazing example of turning a low budget film into an event. Mm -hmm. And um, Paranormal Activity is another one. So I think that in terms of reaching the wide audience, it's got to be something that completely elevates it. So a little worthy drama, I think it's going to have an awful lot of time, yeah. trouble. Uh, it's going to have an awful lot of trouble breaking out. Um, what, I, what I like to see, if I'm speaking to filmmakers, um, is that they are thinking about how to market their film. That's much more for me in terms of if I was to pick up a film that's got a busy social media campaign around it. But the first thing is, I want to know that they know how to market their film um, in, uh, to the right people, in the right way, um, because you know, or to the, actually to the right audience, because I have worked on films where you know, the director has a completely different idea who the audience is to, to, to what I do. Mm -hmm. And that is a massive problem, so actually that can help me know really quickly if the filmmaker has identified the right, right audience and knows how to talk to them. The first thing we're looking at is, is the hook, the pitch. You know, what is it? What is your film? What is this film? And if someone launches into this kind of long diatribe about the importance of this, and it's a wonderful exploration of, I'm like, whoa, and I'm, uh, I'm losing interest because you know we, we work in commercial films, even at the low budget end, and we do do low budget films. We're working at a commercial end with, a, with films that have a hook and a pitch. What happens when I take a film to a market? So when I say a market, there's a market during Cannes Film Festival that runs alongside it. There's a market during Berlin Film Festival that runs alongside. There's a market at the American Film Market, which is a standalone market. And we, you know, us hundreds of sales companies all over the world, we take an office. Uh, it's basically a hotel room. All the furniture's moved out, and we all turn it into an office. And the buyers will be taking meetings all day, and they'll be looking to buy movies. So we are competing with everybody. So, you know, we'll be having a meeting with the buyer, and you'll start telling them about a movie and they will look around the room to, to, the, to the poster and they'll sit there and while you're talking they'll be looking at it. So we're looking at this poster and all the time what they'll be thinking is what is the tone of this film, who is the audience for this film, is this in my head the same film that, that Sam is pitching at me um, now, which, which cinema chain is going to take this, now how many DVD units am, am I going to sell? based on something like this that I had before last year. TV station, is this going to be off a ProSieben or ZDF? Yeah, that's, that is what they're doing that entire time. So what the concept art, the poster, the one sheet, what that does is really help them work out how they're going to market the film. It might not be the final thing that they're going to use, but they want to know that the film they've got in their head is the same one that we've got in the, you know, that we're handing to them. Yeah. So it can be incredibly important and certainly you know, on the Infidel, the one sheet helped us sell the film. Mm. No question. The genre is, is, is possibly the most important thing, um, and I talk a lot about that um, and I give, give sales talks to, to filmmakers because the first thing you say is like, you know, when you say, well, it's a film, what is it? And you know, filmmakers are really funny about that. They want to create a new genre. They say, it's got no genre. It crosses genres. But actually, if you said to someone, what did you see last night? I want to see this one. I haven't heard of it. What is it? Oh, it's a thriller starring. Oh, it's a comedy about. You know, everybody pigeonholes it completely, totally, utterly from the first. Everyone pigeonholes it. And then you, once you, you know, 
if you don't pigeonhole it, someone else is going to pigeonhole it. Um, so I am. Uh, the buyers are. The um, you know you get onto iTunes or Love Film or Netflix or you know every single. They're, they're all in genres. They're all in categories. So I have some hilarious people saying, you know, it's it's I'm creating new genres. You know, it's 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 a it's a brand new genre. I'm like, well then I'm not interested. On the sales side of things, people do think that sales agents are simply the company that comes in and takes a percentage and of all the sales. But actually, you know, we and a lot of other sales companies are more like producers, co-producers, exec producers. We actually do produce films as well. And when we co-produce, it's because we are out there, you know, we are also helping to finance the film, not just by pre-selling it, um, but by, you know, we're bringing in finance, putting in our own money. Um, building the the finance plan um, and so you know from that perspective as well when in terms of the films that we look for if we're going out to find a, an equity investor to put in a million dollars into a movie we need to be darn certain that we're gonna be able to get that money back because that's our names on the line if we don't get that money repaid so that's why there's a certain element of we you know we need to be involved in helping the film get made and you know because many things can and do go wrong along the way when a film is being made you know at, at, at every stage and so we are often 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 consulted um, and involved in and part of the decision making and part of the final cut committee because every all the money involved in the film wants to make sure that the the, the face to the market which is us is it involves as much as possible to help make that film into the film that's going to get their money back. Um, you know, a film can sell, you know, on a pre-buy stage, and what that means is before it's even shot a frame, um, based on script, on cast, on director, on package, on budget, on all those things, a buyer will sum up the pack in the same way that we did before we took it on, the buyer will sum up that and they may make us an offer so they can take it off the table. And it's a big risk, that's a massive risk, and a lot of buyers would actually pay three times the amount of money when it's finished, knowing that it's good, rather than um, you know this much right now. Almost impossible to sell, to pre-sell first-time directors unless they are multi-award winning, super exciting, biggest commercials maker in the UK, whatever that might be, and then they do, and they will, um, but up until that point, it's, it's a, it's a, that's a, a big, big risk, but people still do it. I mean, that's called a pre-sale, and the pre-sales are what are used to bank, um, so you will bank against those, and that will go into the, into the contract. Now, depending on the distributor and the territory, um, a bank may cash flow 100% of it, or 50% of it. So if you only getting 50%, you're still trying to keep up your, the budget of your film. A film can also sell in uh, post-production, so on footage or a promo. Um, that gets less and less these days. Um, buyers are kind of wary about us, you know, being able to polish something that may not be that good. Um, but they're still very good for to keep a buyer's interest, you know, his appetite, you know, keep his appetite wet. Um, or they can sell when they're finished. So there are certain films that, you know, we, we do very well in Sundance in Toronto, you know, a lot of our films are premiered there in midnight sections, um, whether it's sort of Grabbers or Donkey Punch or White Lightning or those kind of films that, that have done, you know, well for us in, 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 in those festivals. Um, so, but you're always thinking about where to show the film for the first time mm -hmm. to the international community. Um, so those places are really good. If you've got a drama and it gets into a festival, a good one, then brilliant, everyone will go and see it. If you've got a drama that doesn't get into a festival, you can almost be dead. So that's why dramas are so dangerous. You know, that dramas are dangerous because they're tricky to get people into the theatre, they don't sell on DVD, and if they haven't worked on any of those other media, you can't sell it for television. Dramas live by awards and by the little bit of chemistry that happens between a director and a lead actor mm. that you can't always make. It's a little bit of magic that doesn't always happen. So, or, in at that point, you know, they don't sell at all. And there are literally films out there, and some that we have worked on, that they can even turn out to be quite good. But because you've not been able to get them into a festival, because they haven't got, therefore haven't got any buzz, because they're the wrong genre, they literally don't sell. So of course, backing up from that, we're always looking for films that we can do a couple of pre-sales on, that we can do a couple of sales in, uh, in post-production, and then try and sell the rest of the world, or as much of the world that will like that film when it's done.
what I look for when I'm looking at a filmmaker's work, whether it's shorts or commercials or music videos or whatever, is I'm looking for a unique voice. I have worked with filmmakers who so 100% knew that they were right and wouldn't listen to anybody else, that they were a complete bloody nightmare because they don't know better than I do about a lot of things. I've been doing this a really long time and actually I'm a good person to ask for advice about what the market wants. I know what the market wants. But then again, I've also worked with filmmakers who are so collaborative that everyone's putting in advice. They're trying to get what everybody wants into their script or onto the screen and end up being kind of, it ends up being complete pudding of a movie because the, the director is trying to please everybody. So I think that there has got to be a happy medium between working with, you know, I've worked with incredibly experienced producers who will be on the phone to me all the time. Sam, who means more in this territory or this territory? What do you think about this? I'd appreciate your advice on what you think about this section of the script that doesn't seem to be working. No, but then, you know, there are also people who are incredibly experienced and um, want to make the best movie and the most commercially successful movie. And so everyone needs to know what they are good at and what they're not good at. Um, and, and, you know, and use, use the team. Mm. And I think I'd say the same about producers. I work with producers who've done everything they could to protect their director, like, you know, Alsatians, razor wire, you know, so the director can fulfil his dream. And actually that's a really stupid thing, because the producer should be the person in the middle, kind of being the go-between mm. between the likes of me, who can often be seen as like, oh no, commercial markets, you know, so filthy commercialism. And actually what I want is for the film to be successful. Mm. Yes, I will make money out of it, but I also help launch that filmmaker's career. That's very much what I, I love doing. Is I love being, I love being at markets and festivals with one of my new filmmakers. It's the first film, and I got CAA and WME chasing him down corridors and calling me up and going, "Sam, help me out here! Help me out here!" It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun.